Back in college, my junior year, we lived in a suite on campus. There were four dorm rooms in the suite. It was half of my friend group in the suite, and we all shared a common room and a small kitchenette. Our friend Cody, who was originally in the suite with us, ended up moving off campus to an apartment with his friend, so the school automatically assigned us a replacement, unfortunately. It was this kid named Rodney. He seemed normal enough. He had blonde short hair, a patchy light beard, almost non-existent eyebrows, and he was really tall. Medium build, but like 6'4". He was in the far corner of the suite, next to my room. We each had our own room, so there was four of us in the suite. Rodney seemed to keep to himself the first few days, until one day, I came back from class and he was sitting in the living room. He said he had to tell me something, and then told me he has parasomnia, which was the reason he was transferred from his previous dorm. I didn't know what that was, until he explained that it's a sleep disorder that may cause him to talk or yell in his sleep due to night terrors, and he just wanted everyone in the suite to be aware of it so that we wouldn't feel uncomfortable. But to tell you the truth, that being the first real conversation I had with the guy made me more uncomfortable than anything. I was hoping I'd get to know him on a more personal level, not find out he has a sleeping disorder. I also didn't entirely get why he thought it was necessary to tell me that. I texted in the dorm group chat we made with Cody still in it if Rodney had told them as well about his sleeping disorder yet. They all said no, and followed that with laughter and confusion. When my other two sweet mates got back later, we hung out in the common room and discussed why we thought Rodney's sleep disorder could have been the reason for him to be transferred from his previous dorm. Then, Rodney walked in and right past us after giving us a slight sup. He went to his room and shut the door. We had the TV on loud, so we whispered amongst ourselves about him. That night, I heard a knock at my door in the middle of the night. I asked who it was, to no reply. I ignored it. And I thought to myself, what if it was Rodney? The next day, I asked my friends if either of them knocked on my door last night, and they both texted me saying no. Cody was having a great laugh from all of this. I was already freaked out and was hoping this wouldn't be a regular thing because it was disturbing already. A few nights later, it got worse. It was the middle of the night. I had already woken up, checked my phone, and saw 2 a.m. I heard footsteps outside in the little hallway of the common area and again, a knock at my door. I didn't answer this time. I knew it was Rodney, and he was starting to freak me out. He clearly was a heavy sleepwalker. I texted the group chat again right then and there at 2 a.m., telling them it just happened again. They didn't respond until morning time, saying they didn't hear anything. It must have been because Rodney's room was right next to mine. That day, I knocked on Rodney's door and asked him if it had been him knocking on my door in the middle of the night. He told me he had no recollection of doing so, but then apologized because he didn't mention that part of his parasomnia is sleepwalking. He told me it was completely harmless and to not worry, but I didn't exactly view it as completely harmless if it was waking me up in the middle of the night freaking me out. A certain amount of time passed that I can't remember, probably less than four days. There hadn't been any other random middle of the night knocks on the door, which I was happy about, but this story wouldn't be told if something else didn't happen. I woke up to noise in my room, I looked around the dark room and spotted Rodney, in the corner of the room facing the wall, muttering to himself. I said Rodney's name, and he turned in my direction and kept saying, open the door, open the door. I was genuinely disturbed. He looked in my direction, but it didn't seem like he was looking at me, rather through me. I saw a smile on his face, and I heard what seemed to be a small laugh as he walked out of the room and out of my view. I didn't know if I was supposed to wake him up or not. I know nothing about sleepwalking and sleep disorders. There was silence now. I grabbed my phone and was about to text my friends, but I was interrupted by this deafeningly loud banging on a door outside, accompanied with Rodney's voice screaming open the door. He was screaming it like a maniacal madman. I ran to the common area and saw him at the opposite end of the hall thrashing his fists on one of our suite mate's doors. I ran to Rodney and started shaking him to wake up. My two friends came out of their rooms to the commotion as well, and we all started to shake Rodney until he stopped, looked at all three of us, and with this blank look on his face, said, I'm sorry guys, and walked to his room and shut the door. The three of us stood there in shock, not even knowing what to say or do. A neighboring room must have called campus police because they showed up at our door. We had to tell them the truth. Rodney spoke with them for a while, then he went back to his room. I made sure not to leave my room unlocked again that night. 
The next day, Rodney was gone, without a trace of him ever having been there. Like I said, I know nothing about sleepwalking or any of that stuff, but that didn't look like sleepwalking to me. I don't know what was or is currently going on in that guy's head, but he needs to get help. I got along fine with my college roommate, Stacy. She was a messy one sometimes, but other than that, we had no problems. We'd lend each other stuff all the time. At our school, we had bunk beds, which I think are kind of unusual in college dorms. I was on the top bunk because I was the lighter sleeper, and Stacy was always constantly getting up in the middle of the night, so she'd definitely be waking me up if I were on the bottom. There was this one night that still sticks with me to this day, only because I don't really know how to logically explain it. Stacy and I were in our room studying. I was at my desk and she was in her bed. I had a big presentation the next day for one of my classes, so I was just going over my talking points again. In fact, I practiced them to Stacy a few times, and she acted as my audience, then asking questions afterwards. She told me I could borrow one of her tops tomorrow if I need to for my presentation, as I didn't have any nice formal kinds of tops with me at school. After helping me review, she went back to her studying for a little more, then she went to sleep. I wasn't done studying, but as a courtesy, I turned off my desk lamp and went up to my bunk and kept studying there on my laptop. Stacy would snore sometimes, so when she started snoring, I knew she was asleep. I continued my studying and rehearsing for another half hour to an hour before closing my laptop screen, putting it at the end of my bed, then going to sleep. I woke up at like 5 a.m. when light was just barely starting to creep into the almost pitch black room through the windows. I heard Stacy down below me, walking around. I groggily said Stacy's name, and she answered with, mm-hmm. I asked her if I could still borrow a nice top to wear for my presentation later that day. She went, mm-hmm, again, and I heard her open her closet door. I said thanks. I looked down at her and saw her bent over in the closet. Then she got out and waved at me as she went to leave the dorm. The sound of the door closing snaps me out of my daze just a bit more. I remember grabbing my phone to check the time, and just to naturally check for any notifications. It was around 5 a.m. I wondered where Stacy could have been going. Most likely the bathroom, like she often would in the middle of the night. The waving was just a bit unusual, though. But then, I heard a snore from below me in the lower bunk. At first, I thought I imagined it. Like, how could that be possible? I peered my head over the edge of the top bunk, and there was Stacy under the sheets. Did I just dream seeing Stacy in her closet? No, because I looked at the closet door and it was still open. I quickly hurried to the door to the room and went out to look into the hallway on both sides. There wasn't a soul in sight, but it had been at least five minutes since I heard the door shut. I shook Stacy awake and told her someone was just in our room. It took a few moments for her to fully wake up and snap to reality, which she then showed major concern for and rushed to check her closet for anything stolen. Nothing was stolen though. I still to this day don't know who that was or how she got in. I reported it to university police, but their investigation and review of the camera in the lobby of the building turned up nothing, but I know for a fact it wasn't a hallucination or dream. It was my freshman year in the University of Alabama. I had gotten my roommate's information a few weeks in advance and his name was Brandon. This was back in 2013. We had been in contact in the weeks before classes would start. However, due to family-related reasons, Brandon had to switch to a different school right before classes even began. So for the first weekend, as everyone else was meeting their roommates, I was unpacking alone, still not yet assigned a replacement roommate. I did meet some of the other kids on my floor though. They were nice. Then, that Sunday night, my roommate arrived. He was walking through the dorm hall with a backpack looking confused, and I asked him if he had just been transferred into this building, and he said yes. I asked him if he was in dorm number 5. That wasn't the actual number of my room, I'm just using that for the story. But he said yes, that was his room. So I shook his hand, gave him my name, and told him I was his roommate. He told me his name was Robert, but to call him Bob. Unusual, I'd never met someone named Robert who preferred to be called Bob. I led Bob to the dorm in which I had already decorated and furnished on my side. His side was still empty. He plopped his backpack on his bed and looked at me and smiled for a bit, then said in his slight Turkish accent, 
that he didn't have all this stuff yet. He opened his backpack and pulled out a sheet which he threw over his bed. Since it was already past 9 and tomorrow was the first day of class, Bob and I just sat on our respective beds chatting. I tried to read his vibe at first, as you do when meeting a new person, let alone your roommate. I couldn't really get a good read on him though. He seemed a little quieter. He had this very deep voice and maybe a slightly awkward vibe to him, but I was purposely not judging because people can be nervous when meeting other people for the first time. Anyway, eventually, after talking for a bit, Bob just laid flat on the bed with the sheet on it and used his backpack as a pillow. It looked incredibly uncomfortable. I had no idea how or why he was doing that. I offered him a pillow and he accepted it. I eventually fell asleep past 10. And do you ever wake up to something but you don't know what it was? That happened to me that night. I was confused why I woke up because I didn't hear anything. But that was the freaky thing. It was dead silent in there, not even the sound of Bob breathing. I flipped to my side and screamed at the tall figure looming over my bedside. I came to the realization that it was Bob after he started apologizing and said that he was just going to the bathroom. My heart was beating like it was running a marathon. I couldn't even think to ask him why he was standing over my bed like that if he was just going to the bathroom. He apologized again as he went back to his bed. I told him it's okay. Needless to say, I was wide awake after that. I slept on my side with my back to him the rest of the night though, trying to avoid the uncomfortableness. The next morning, I woke up to my alarm and I saw Bob was still laying in his bed, likely pretending to be sleeping still. I went through my bag to get my books and such, and I had this feeling in my gut that something was moved in my bag, like it was gone through. I looked up at Bob again, and he was still allegedly sleeping. I decided to take a couple of my more valuable things and throw them in my backpack that I took to class. In class, I emailed the housing department and then submitted a room change request online, stating my roommate made me uncomfortable. After class that day, I returned to my dorm and was confused to notice the door was being held open with a door stopper. I noticed Bob had a big duffel bag on his bed now. I guessed he was unpacking. I laid in my bed on my laptop and eventually Bob came in. He greeted me and went to his bed, where he took his duffel bag and put it under the bed, and he literally just looked at me with this empty expression. I pretended to not really notice, but his weirdness was really bothering me. I finally looked back at him with not a friendly expression, and he gave me a slight nod. Then he climbed into his bed and just laid there on his phone. Eventually, I went out to the dining hall for dinner. When I came back, Bob was still there. I didn't know what his deal was, if he'd ever leave the dorm or what. I asked him if he had class that day. He said yes, but just one. That night, after turning the lights off, I noticed Bob leaning on the wall in his bed, facing me on his phone. I constantly felt like he was looking at me. I was anxious to get a response from the housing department, so I checked my email and saw they responded, but it wasn't the response I was hoping for. The lady who emailed me back expressed confusion in my request, stating my replacement roommate had not yet been assigned and that there should be no one else in the room with me. I looked at Bob, who looked back at me. I was about to ask him if he had his key to the room on him. I didn't ask that though. I put my laptop and other belongings in my backpack and duffel bag, as he just watched. He didn't say anything, and I think he knew that I knew. I left the room without saying anything, went to a safe place, and called campus police to report him. By the time they arrived to the dorms, Bob, or whatever his real name was, was gone, along with his little bit of stuff. I found out that night that he stole some clothes from me, my iPhone charger, and some of the food I stored in my closet. As for what he was doing watching me sleep, I could only imagine he was making sure I was asleep before going through my stuff. I had a completely random, possibly homeless person in my room for basically an entire 24 hours. My real roommate moved in two days later, 